Good morning everyone, I hope you're all well. Uh, so PHEVs or plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, that's what this video is about. What exactly is a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle for those who aren't aware, because remember there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid, more of that in a minute. Um, but also I've had both of these cars for two years. What is my average miles per gallon? Are they the best of both worlds or the worst of both worlds? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna cover in this video. So what exactly is a PHEV? Plug-in hybrid electric vehicle is an electric vehicle that you can plug in, but it still has an engine as well. So you can plug it in and it will charge from mains electricity a drive battery and the vehicle can drive on that drive battery alone. But there is also a combustion engine, usually under the bonnet, which can burn fossil fuels and that can also supply power to drive the wheels as well. Sorry, I was mildly distracted by a truck over there which is ground out trying to get into a driveway. Okay, let's carry on. So, yes, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. A really contentious topic whenever we go to shows or uh, often when we just speak to people about electric vehicles and often in comments on videos, people say, yes, but I've got a self-charging hybrid. Ha ha ha, it's brilliant. Well, there is no such thing. A self-charging hybrid such as <coughs> Toyota Prius, Lexus, you have to put fuel in, which is burnt to make some electricity, and they can mildly drive uh, the vehicle alone from the power that generates. They cannot take energy from the grid, they are non-plug-in vehicles. So basically, all the time it's moving, it needs to have burnt fossil fuels to have made ele its electricity. So they're not self-charging, they can maybe recuperate a little bit of energy going down a hill. They can maybe cut the engine off in a traffic jam. All well and good, one small step. But actually when you plug in a vehicle into the mains, that then is a greener way to run a car because ideally that mains electricity is generated from a green source of which we are getting there. We don't need to build extra coal powered fire stations, that's for sure. So plug in hybrid electric vehicles. But does that mean they're the best of both or worst of each? Well, this is what we're gonna carry on talking to you about this in this video. So I want to start off this video talking about this Chevrolet Volt, more commonly known in the UK as a Vauxhall Ampera. Um, we had the Vauxhall brand in the UK for General Motors, but it was also sold under the Chevrolet badge as well, and they're the same vehicle under the skin. Now, points to anyone who's been recognised in this car already? Well, I bought this car back in May 2019 from none other than Mr. Johnny Smith himself, and you will see this car on some of his videos from a little while back. It was his car for a while, and I think he quite liked it. And then I bought it from him and we've been driving it regularly, every day, ever since. And it's actually been a faultless car. Well done, Johnny. Thank you very much. Great used car. We've not had a single bean of a problem with this car. We've been running it most days and it's also been a courtesy car for some of our customers. So it's been well used and actually much loved. But what's it got under the bonnet here? So under here we've got a 1.4 litre petrol engine, much as you'd find in Vauxhall Corsas and Vauxhall Astras and such like, pretty well proven engine. And then you've got a 16 and a half, roughly speaking, kilowatt hour battery pack, which runs under the central tunnel of the car. And that is enough to give this car a achievable electric only range, so it doesn't turn the motor on at all. Electric only range of, for me, typically between 30 and 45 miles. I have done over 50 miles on electric alone. And as I say, it's been a faultless car. Um, and one of my defensive points of a Chevrolet Volt, I think, and plug-in hybrids in general is, it was actually one of these cars that first got me into electric. The story behind that is I was at an auction buying your BMWs and Porsches and Mercedes like anything else. And one of these comes through, it was actually a Vauxhall Ampera. One of these comes through and it just caught my eye. It was something different and it intrigued me. You know, getting a bit bored of the normal cars, thought I would try one of these. And I absolutely love that car. I got it and I was fascinated by it. And it really got me into how nice driving an electric car is. And then you end up resenting the times that the petrol engine comes on and you start seeing miles per gallon numbers come into it. Um, so one of my defensive points with plug-in hybrid electric vehicles is they are maybe a good you know, intro, intro electric cars, a good gateway drug as it were. And um, I was fascinated by it, absolutely love that car. And I've had loads of them ever since. There's not that many in the UK actually. And so probably of the numbers that are in the UK, I've probably bought and sold 
quite a large majority of those. So if you have a Vauxhall Ampere or a Chevrolet Volt in Europe, I'd love to hear your comments below. And the same for our US audience, you know, how they lasted in the US, because this car, you can see it's well used, has been a faultless car over time. And I'm gonna cover its Marsberg Allen numbers in a little bit, but Chevrolet Volt, I love it. And thank you, Johnny Smith. I hope you watch this video and uh, can put your own comment on this as well. And so this is a VW Golf GTE, and it's the same underskin as the Passat GTE. So this has been my wife's car for, again, over two years now, and uh, works on much the same principle, really. Um, so you can plug it in at the front here, and then underneath you've got a uh, 1.4 litre petrol engine, and then it also has a capacity in the battery of about seven kilowatt hours, which gives this a real world range of kind of between 15 and 25 miles. And like with most cars, ignore what manufacturers claim, usually in most plug-in hybrids, it's a range of about 20 miles. It's really only the Chevrolet Volt Vauxhall Ampere which is greater than that because it has a bigger drive battery. So there are lots of plug-in hybrids on the market now, but all the ones I've driven real world really only have a range in the teens, maybe into the lower 20s, in real case scenario. But again, I'll cover what we've averaged in the Master Gallon on this over the last couple of years in a minute. But it's been fairly fault free and uh, the downside is it does need maintenance. I've just done a service at VW and you still have to do that every year as I have done with that car there. Now you do have to service just electric cars as well, with the exception of Tesla who basically say, well, there isn't really any maintenance schedule. Um, it would be good to see more electric vehicles being acknowledged that there is no maintenance schedule because there's no oil to change and no spark plugs and no that kind of stuff with it. Uh, but it's been a trouble-free car, um, with the exception that it did have to go back to VW for a uh, warranty item, um, a recall, which was to reseal the battery pack. VW took the car away for a couple of weeks, transported all the way to the EV specialist in Exeter. Um, but that was all done, free of charge. Driving this Chevy Volt, it may be a few years old now, but it's still a good thing. It's very smooth, it's very comfortable, it's got a nice ride comfort. It's quiet, it's easy. You've got a bit of regen braking as well. You can actually choose how much regen, whether you kind of coast more or you bring it down to the L position here. When you lift off the throttle, you'll get the regenerative braking effect. And it's just quite a reasonable car. You can choose between running electric only, running a hybrid combination, or actually, if you're on a motorway, you have to use the engine anyway to also have that run more and charge the battery pack as you go. So when you come off the motorway, again, you can revert to full electric mode, um, which might be very applicable as more and more cities ban combustion cars or heavily penalize combustion cars for going into city centers. The one thing I would say about the Chevy Volt is when the engine is running, you can barely hear it, it's very quiet, unless you put your foot down. It's got a very complicated kind of gearbox mechanism, which I'm not even gonna try and explain. Somebody might be willing to do so in the comment below. It works seamlessly, but if you put your foot down when the engine's running, it kind of has to go and it's not directly connected to the wheels through a static gear. So it's like a CVT gearbox and it just kind of revs inanely whilst the car does pick up on acceleration. But actually, if you just drive fairly gently, you normally never hear the engines running. And in electric mode only, it's a very smooth, effortless, easy going car. And I really like it. And the Chevy Volt, some of the dashboard, I mean, it was really interesting in its time. I guess it's starting to look a little bit dated now but there's no squeaks there's no rattles it's still fully functional and as i say we just had no problems with this car in the time that we've owned it the mark 7 golf has always been a nice place to be it's well trimmed in here nice finish nice lighting nice touch and feel about everything it's a really good all round. i mean that's what the golf's about isn't it it's smart uh, it's spacious enough for family use, it can do a bit of everything and it's been great for us, no problem you know, over the years with uh, family use and so I'm a big fan. The way this works is pretty similar to all the other ones, you typically default to electric only so when you start the car it just goes to electric and it will run that until the battery, the drive battery runs out and then it will turn on the uh, petrol engine as well. And that petrol engine, it can work as a hybrid, so even when it runs that petrol engine, you stop stationary, it will cut the engine whenever it can and um, drive like then a mild hybrid, a non-plug-in hybrid. 
and it can still get reasonable miles per gallon actually I drove from uh, all through town the other day from after the service in pool to our work here so about 20 miles which is basically all through town and average 54 miles per gallon so even when there's no drive battery it's it's reasonable um, now the interesting thing it's a GTE so when you go to GTE mode it then combines that petrol engine with the electric and electric motor so the petrol has got about 150 horsepower then it adds about another 50 from the electric motor and it goes into quite a nice sort of GT mode car so you've got an engine you've got paddle shifts you've got a little raspy exhaust note and you can drive it like a hot hatch like the Golf GTI um, and it's not bad at that at all it's not bad at that at all but again it's just better when the engine isn't on actually when it drives around just as an EV it's a lovely smooth car with nice power and nice torque even though the, the numbers from the uh, electric motor alone don't read much again that torquey pull all the time and one of my wife's complaints actually was that when you really put your foot down and it puts the motor on as well it kind of pauses then it goes right motor Rah! and then it goes starts a cold engine and revs it and stuff like that so you know um, that's then and, and then it sort of feels kind of slow as well um, but when it's got drive battery and the motor and you've got charge and drive batteries it's got the power from that and you've got both and you can drive it like a hot hatch it's all good fun and it works as reasonably well as it could be um, but like now you stop in traffic and it's just nice and quiet the way this works is slightly different electric motors on the gearbox it's got a dsg gearbox so when you're actually in electric you can just about feel it still goes through the gears it actually still goes gear one two three you can i mean you can just about feel it most people would never notice but that's quite interesting you've kind of still got these gears on the electric only um and uh in a, in a way that could be kind of a, a fun thing to have have that you just don't need gearboxes with electric motors is the point that's why electric cars don't typically have gearboxes so um yeah you know that's quite interesting it works differently to the the gearbox on the uh the vault um but it's a, it's a good car you know we we have had our uh, good times with it and obviously the uh fuel economy numbers are pretty good and it's just been the good all-rounder that it should be but this is being replaced with a VW ID3. Much the same thing, but fully electric, much simpler, and none of that complicated stuff, and always lots of smooth power available to it. In the VW, by the way, you do also have a choice of a kind of coasting mode, or you can pull this lever back here into a regenerative braking mode. Very similar to the uh, Chevrolet Volt. So you lift off the throttle and it slows down the motor and puts charge in the battery. But even when you use the kind of coasting mode, um, I actually have learned to quite like that because you lift off and it, it coasts along. I mean, it, it's actually quite good. If you put your foot on the brake, it doesn't mean it's gone straight for the friction pads. It is actually then braking with the motor. Um, and some people claim actually you can get better economy driving in coasting mode versus the regen mode. Probably based on different driving scenarios and possibly different driving styles as well. But what this did get, give me a sort of flavour for was actually the sort of coasting mode is, is pretty good. I quite like it. So if you've got one of these, do you drive it with the region mode on or off? I'd be interested to hear in the comments below. So the way we've used this Golf GTE has been, I guess, a case in point for these, where my wife literally does a school run every day um, and very occasionally goes to see her family in London, so a couple of hundred mile round trip, and she doesn't want to, you know, go through the kind of plugging it in scenario, driving back on her home on her own late at night um, with our daughter in the car. So, the point with this has been that um, it's been hard to justify spending the money on an EV which has the kind of 200 mile range capability. So you get EVs now. I mean, the original Nissan Leaf, Renault Zoe's would do the job for nearly the whole time in in a day, but. To then do the longer journey, you'd have to use a different car. And wife doesn't like changing cars. This is familiar to her. And to just jump in another car is fine to me, but it isn't for somebody who's not so confident at driving. And so, you know, this is why we've had this car for a couple of years, because it serves its purpose for all of that. And actually, we've barely, as you, you'll you see from the numbers, that we've barely burned any, any petrol over the time that we've owned it. Um, so that's been the case in point for this and it, it, as I'll say a lot with PHEVs it's all down to usage how are you going to use the car to get the best out of it we haven't bought these because they're tax efficient uh, through a company car scheme or anything like that and that's been the case for a lot of them um, but we have managed to maximize the economy we can get out of this car purely on its usage. 
Now, all, nearly all PHEVs are based on normal uh, vehicles, a normal production line with diesel and petrol variants as well. So they have to find somewhere to put the batteries and that normally means a compromise somewhere. I don't think Volkswagen did too bad with this. Again, it is a fairly small battery pack that they've managed to fit in under the boot floor here. Um, so with this car, it seems fairly unaffected but that's because the battery pack's quite small. So with most cars, there's a battery pack under the boot floor, making the boot smaller. The Chevrolet Volt still has a large boot, although it does have this high loading seal here, and you can see some battle scars, sorry, patina uh, from use. The compromise on this side is that they put the batteries down in the center tunnel, so it is only a four seater. Okay, so what about economy? How many miles per gallon are we getting from these? When you see stated miles per gallon for PHEVs, you can't really take any of those numbers as truth. It all depends on how you use the car. So if the car has an electric only range of say 20 miles or 25 miles, and you plug it in every night and you only do 20 or 25 miles a day, your miles per gallon will be almost infinite. They tend to run the engine briefly every now and then as a kind of maintenance cycle, but generally that will be almost infinite miles per gallon, 250, 300, 400 miles per gallon. Um, um, but when you do the longer journeys, obviously the engine comes on and it will have to burn petrol and then you start seeing the impact. So this Chevrolet Volt over its lifetime on the computer here tells me it's averaged 87 miles per gallon. Now that's pretty good, isn't it? Now this car does get used for longer journeys as well. So that is a real world mix of this car over its life. And it's now done 66,000 miles um, in its eight years of life. And so I think that's a pretty good number and it's certainly more than I've seen out of any petrol or diesel car alone. So we're quite happy with that. It's not bad at all but I think we might be able to do slightly better. So our Golf, and even though this has less range on electric, this is its uh, miles per gallon number. Now I don't have a lifetime miles per gallon for this. I did have a really long term miles per gallon since we've owned the car, but when it went in for that recall on the battery, uh, everything was reset. So I only have the data since then. So since it was reset, 300 miles per gallon. 300 and that is down to usage this primarily is a school run car every now and then my wife would do a trip up to london and back a couple of hundred miles but nearly always this car goes to the school twice a day and it gets plugged in in between all that so it's done all that purely on electric so since the last time i fueled up which was 900 miles ago i've still got just under three quarters of a tank left and that also is 300 miles per gallon 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour average by the way um, and so there's still loads of fuel left in it as well so it's all down to usage if you don't do too many miles in a day and you keep plugging it in you can get some incredible numbers and ultimately barely run the petrol engine which is a good thing isn't it so there we are our two plug-in hybrid electric vehicles and a little bit about our experience with them long term and they've both been pretty good cars to be fair and as you can see as long as you plug them in you can get some pretty good economy if you never plug them in well you're going to get you know fuel economy a bit better than your normal petrol or diesel car to be honest so it's all about how you use them and if you take the effort to plug them in the trouble is in the uk what we saw a lot of is that they were cheap for company car tax so people would buy them they'd never plug them in they just run them burning petrol all the time which if you can be bothered to plug them in makes all the difference in the world um, so they're a good first step and a good entry into EV ownership and from my experience we get a lot of customers bringing in PHEVs who then want to go fully electric and isn't that ideal that's a perfect thing so if a PHEV gives you the confidence to do that then that's a good thing and they have their place on the market um, ultimately though if you can take all those kind of complicated bits out of the car the engine the need to burn fuel need to stop at petrol stations the exhaust the gearboxes spark plugs and all that stuff get rid of it all simplify the whole vehicle with just a battery vehicle battery electric motor much easier isn't it so ultimately if you can do that that's the best way to go um, but they're a reasonable introduction if that gives you the confidence to do so so i hope that's been a really useful video and say these aren't just cars borrowed for a day and so i thought you'd just like to see a little bit more of my experiences with them so thank you for watching as ever appreciate all the comments that you make below and what your experiences are with phevs and if you've gone from a phev to battery electric i'd love to hear that because it again goes to show that they've got their point in the market but for now that's it thank you for watching i appreciate that and don't forget to follow us on all the social media channels as well hey everyone thanks for watching our videos if you like our content and want to see more don't forget to not only subscribe but also hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any new videos as they're uploaded 
Plus, we're also on Instagram. Just look up R Simons or RSEV. Us, we're on Facebook and Twitter. So lots of news, stories, and things as we go on each one of those channels.